Hi, my name is Mandy and welcome to What Mandy Made Next. Today is Friday the 19th of August 2022 and you've probably guessed I'm already back from Florida. So I've had a great time. I stayed in Matlache, which is southwest Florida, um, near Fort Myers. So uh, yeah, it's a lovely part of the world. So, I have got some haul to show you later. I've also got two starts, which I started two new projects whilst on holiday, and a surprise finish. So, let's get started. Usually, the format of my vlog is that I donate different days of the week to different crafts. Now, I may start looking down because I've got my show notes here so I don't forget anything that I want to tell you. So, um, right, let's just start with the Miniature Monday. So this is when I um, make a miniature project. Well, I was travelling on the Monday and um, we flew back Monday night so obviously I didn't start any new little mini projects whilst away but when I come back this had arrived it's my autumn banner and this is designed by Sue Hancock from Liberty Bell and uh, I, su I subscribe to her Bonanza Banner Club so there are four banners uh, for each season and you get um, two of the letters or a part of the banner uh, every month so i've already received the a and the u and this will be the t and the u the second part looks like we've got some pumpkins there a crow and a corn sack so on monday i will start the Bonanza banner making that the A and the U and then hopefully this these two letters the following Monday but I can't wait so that was rather a nice little surprise when I when I got back <laughs> so Tuesday is my thimble Tuesday and I have been working on a project it is called a year in the life of and it's by the historical sampler company and basically each square or block or window um, is a month and they've designed you know something to do with that month so January we've got the snowman and Tuesday uh, February we've got hearts for Valentine's so that's the picture And this is where I've got up to. Now, last time I spoke with you, I just completed the July window. And before I went away, I had completed August and started working on the September one. And the last couple of days, I've been a little bit jet lagged, I must admit. So I've just been completing the September whenever I felt like doing a little bit of stitching so there we go we've got nine completed now I'll show you this in more detail when I film a montage at the end but um yeah the September one September soon coming round isn't it um is the schoolhouse because in the UK in September everyone starts back, well the children start back to school. So this I believe has worked on a 14 count Ada. So it's a nice stitch because, you know, I still use a magnifier but um, it's a nice easier stitch on the eye because obviously there's more, the holes are bigger. So... Although I work on that on a Tuesday usually, I mean, that isn't enough to keep me going through all the Tuesdays of the month. So I also work on another project. Now, I did start a new project whilst on holiday. 
and I'll be rotating this into my Tuesday stitch. And this is the Feast of Friendship by Blackbird Designs. A lot of floss tubers have stitched this and I became aware of this pattern by watching Olivia from her Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. So she'd done, um, she'd stitched this one. And it's a lovely stitch. And I think I've done quite a lot of it. Talking of a lot of, look at all this fabric. I've got no spatial awareness. And there is a calculator online where you can actually put the count of your linen in and um, your stitch um, length and I think width. And then it'll give you how much linen or aid that you require. Um, you also include in that your borders, you know, for when you're framing. Uh, and I, I, I thought I had to put the right calculation in, but I've got all this fabric. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Because it'll get used up. But um, my partner said that looks a rather a small piece for a large piece of fabric. But then again, you are looking at someone who, when online shopping fairs come out, decided they were going to make some leek and potato soup and ordered the ingredients. And when it arrived, there was one massive <laughs> potato <laughs> and about 20 odd leeks. So this is how far I've got. I think I've done quite well. I'm quite surprised myself. So let me bring this a little bit closer so you can see I have put my initials in there, AE, and uh, the year of stitching. I've just got to complete these, this word here, but at the time I'd got it in the hoop and uh, I was unable to finish that piece. And the purple here, here I've um, pulled from stash. So, but the rest are the call for threads. The linen is a DMC colour and it's in a light, the colourway is light mocha linen and I purchased this with the threads from Lakeside um, which is an online shop in the UK. Now the threads, what this actual piece was stitched in is Crescent Colours and Gentle Arts, which does make a difference. If I bring this closer here, you'll see why. You see the pumpkin, can you see the different hues of shade? Because this is DMC, it's, um, there are no hues. It's um, just all dyed thread. Well, that's dyed thread, but what I mean to say is there are no variations. So what's happened is my pumpkin there, I think looks rather flat. The other um, problem I had is that they give you two choices for the DMC for the bowl. And um, I got both the DMC colors and then I decided to use this one and I think it's just a little bit too dark. I should have used more of a silvery colour. In fact, I should have just gone with my gut instinct when I went to buy the thread. I should have used a more silvery one. I don't have to use this one just because they suggest that. Because um, in the actual picture you can see that it's more of a silvery bowl so I was a little bit disappointed that way I would like to start using other threads now I've always either used anchor or DMC but um, yeah I think it's time to start investing in other threads because you know I think it makes a difference a real difference I'm going to now work on completing the roof 
and there's a couple more chimneys to stitch in there and then start the border down there and then hopefully if I have time before I next speak to you is to start some work on the actual house but I think I've gone great guns with this I'm really pleased so yeah that's my feast of friendship I think I might make a little autumn project bag to go with that yeah I'll pop that there out the way for everything tumbles on because my craft room's a little bit messy I do apologize but we're coming back from holiday all my haul I've just put in here you see so Wednesday is my wool Wednesday and I've got another surprise for you I've got I'm working on the In Stillness cardigan by wow. Alicia Plummer. Um, this is a cardigan, what's meant to be worn with four um, inch ease, positive ease. So I've decided to knit the cardigan, which is the size 50 inch bust, because that will be the finished size. So I've gone with the finished size 50 inch, which will give me plenty if not more than four inch positive ease. So when I last spoke to you, I just started the top bit. It's knit top down. It's a raglan sleeve style and you knit it all in one and, and then you split off for your, you know, your sleeves and, and what have you. But this is how far I got. Last time I'd only got so far down, but now I have managed to knit down to the actual rib. And I've started on my sleeve. So the patterning, if I bring it up, I will show you this a bit closer at the end, but the patterning is on the two fronts of the cardigan. And then it finishes mid sleeve. There is no patterning on the sleeve. It's just on the back and on the two front. And uh, yeah, I didn't start the rib and there's a reason for that. I purchased my yarn from Love Crafts. It's King Cole. It's called Panache. And I'll bring the yarn up. Let me see if I can get it to be a bit of a more true colour, that's it. And it's in the oatmeal colourway. So the the composition of this yarn is 50% wool and 50% acrylic. But it's a beautiful yarn. It's quite um, what people call toothy because it's hairy. And I bought it initially to knit the Francis cardigan. But I wasn't getting on well because of the lace work. So I unravelled and decided to knit the Unstillness cardigan, which I'm glad I did now because I think this wool suits this type of cardigan. It is beautiful how it shows up the, the patterning. I just love, love this. I love the colour. I do. I am a beigey. But this is just beautiful and it's got variations. I'm not thinking it's showing up. But if you look at the, I don't know if you can see, on the wall, um, there is like slight variations in tone. Like I say, it is a beautiful wall. It's a double knit. I think I had to size up with my needles because I think there was to meet gauge. Now, because I ordered so many balls of this yarn, so many grams, okay, I would like the cardigan to be a little bit longer. So I thought what I'll do is when I got to the rib, well, I should start doing the rib, I've left it on the needles, you see, these needles because what I'm thinking is if I finish if I get the sleeves knit up I'm having to knit some magic loops my I don't know where my DPNs are I'll find them 
but if I get the yeah needs the sleeve if we get the sleeve finished and the other sleeve then I can try it on and see how much wool I've got left and uh, see if I can actually lengthen the card a little because what I don't want to do is knit this off and then finish the sleeves and find I've got, say, 50 grams of wool left when I could have lengthened my cardigan, you see. So we'll see how we go. I've been looking on this website on Instagram and her name is Dot Pebbles, I think. And she designs these patterns for little frogs and rabbits and things. And I was thinking... How wonderful it would be to knit a rabbit in this wool because it's quite hairy, furry. So that would, I thought that would look wonderful. But, I digress there. So that's my In Stillness cardigan by Alicia Plummer. And uh, I've really enjoyed working on that. I haven't worked on it since I've come back, but... Uh, I'm going to pick up where I left off and, uh, yeah, see how far I get for next time when I see you. Now, I've got another start. I took this on holiday. I find when I go away, it's far easier to take a crochet project with me because you haven't got different sets of needles and, and all that. You know, it's, it's just less hassle, I think, to take some crochet. So if you remember, I don't know well, I don't know if you do, but this has been sat behind me for quite a while now. Now, I bought this yarn a long, long time ago at the, oh, what is it? The Festival of Quilts. Oh, it must have been, gosh, six years ago, something ridiculous like that. And, you know, when you buy the wool and you, it was in a sale, I thought, oh, that looks nice. And then when you get it home, you... It just sits there and then in the end you think, what can I do with it? So this is called Sparkles and it's by a company called DY Choice. And they say 15% of this is wool. The rest is acrylic um, and there's also metallized polyester in there, which will be this. So I had, these are 50 gram balls, so I had four of these, so I've got 200 grams. And it's just sat there and I thought, I'm going to have to do something with this. So I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll crochet a shawl. So I chose the Victoria Shawl by Sandra Paul. Uh, I purchased this pattern off Ravelry. It's a triangular shawl and um, once you get going, it is a four row repeat. So um, that's easier to remember. And then you just crochet back and forth. You see, um, the it's not a difficult one. There are US and UK terms. I prefer the USA terminology. I find it easier to follow. It makes sense to me. Uh, what else can I tell you about this? Um, it's got these puff stitches. I mean, I, I, everyone knows Sandra who crochets. Her podcast is called The Cherry Heart Podcast on YouTube. And she's also got a website. And I'll pop all the links in down below. But it is a really pretty pattern. So I'll hold this up. This wool is not doing it any justice. I can tell you that much. So let's. There we go. And I just I just want to use this up, you see. I really do. And I thought, well, if you just use it for going to work, you know, when you go work and wrap it round in the colder days or in the house. But I think this would look lovely in sort of a more of a mohair or a soft yarn. Um, Elderflower Stitches, she has some beautiful yarns in her shop. And the very pastel colours, such as your peaches and pale pinks, and I think that would look this shawl would look lovely, uh, crocheted in some of her wool. 
which I might do um, later on. But um, I've enjoyed working on this. You do have to um, watch, well I do anyhow, I have to count and watch my crochet because it's so easy to miss, isn't it, uh, when you're patterning. But um, like I say, it's, uh, once you get into the pattern, you, you sort of remember it off by heart. Now there is a border to this, it's like, um, is it a shell border? And the border goes all the way round the quilt, uh, quilt, round the shawl. So I've got a few more rows yet before I um, start the border. But I don't know, I mean, it's only, if I do, it's only taken me 100 grams and I just don't know whether to actually carry on and uh, see where I go. Because this is a double knit, I've used a four millimeter crochet hook. Um, in the pattern, it's a smaller crochet hook because obviously the yarn is probably a four ply pattern. But anyway, there we go. That's my Victoria shawl. I'm very pleased how it's coming on. I just wish really that I perhaps had given the yarn away than trying to use it up. I think that would have been a better use for it. But still. Right, Thursday. So that was my everything woolly for Wednesday. Now Thursday, I usually work on my Mickey's. <laughs> Let me show you the progress on this because you're going to be quite surprised. My mouth's getting dry. Should have brought a drink. Here we go. It's completed. In all its glory. I'm going to stand up so you can see this better. There we go. I have loved it every minute of this stitching this I really have this is going to be framed and we're thinking of hanging this in our kitchen because we like a cup of coffee in the morning yeah and it says good morning on it so let me just go over a few of the design details with you. this project. Let me take the board away. So this project I first heard about by watching Denise of Black Ribbon Studio. So Denise announced that there was going to be a stitch along and it was Mickey's Coffee. And she was hosting this stitch along with Sarah and her YouTube channel is uh, Memphis Sarah E. So they were going to host this stitch along and uh, the pattern they'd purchased off Etsy from Azana Cross Stitch. So I decided I would like to join in too. So I purchased the pattern. I was very pleased with the download. You could either have the black and white key or you could have the coloured key. I chose to use the coloured key. I found that easier. Now this pattern apparently is compatible with Pattern Keeper, but I haven't I haven't got the app because I have an iPhone and it's not compatible with Apple products yet. They are working on that. So what I tend to do is download the pattern into my Kindle app on my iPad and then I take a screenshot of the pattern and then I save it in photographs. I go on edit on my photographs and then what I do is use the yellow marker and uh, cross off my stitches that way. So that way I'm not having to download it to paper and mark off. I can do it all on my iPad. So the fabric, the Ada is, I think this is um, a 16 count, I'm pretty sure. 
and there are a total of 35 different DMC colours used in this. And they do say that there's one colour where you'll need four skeins. Um, I think I did run out of one of the other colours. So that meant I've used um, a total of 40, diff uh, 40 skeins. Okay, so there's 35 colours, but I've used 40 skeins. Because black is the, the majority of... Um, shade you'll use for this which made me think should i have done this on a black ada i don't know i think if i stitch something like this again i may use what's called floche because i believe floche is a little bit thicker because sometimes you can see i mean it's not showing up there that's good uh, a little fleck of white behind the black but there we go So, so that's my Mickey's coffee. There is a hashtag to this. Um, hashtag coffee with Mickey Sal. Uh, this is on Instagram. Now, when I looked on Instagram, there didn't seem to be a lot of activity. However, as I have stitched this, I have taken photographs of the progress or video. So I'm going to put something together and I'm going to upload that to that hashtag on Instagram. So, yeah. I feel so accomplished with this piece I really do and um, I'm thinking I'm not going to have a mount I'm just going to uh, when I frame this it won't have a mount and I'm thinking maybe a plain black frame I don't know or whether I should have a little white mount I'm not sure do you think I should have a mount I don't know it's quite a big piece but um, I've loved every moment, every stitch. Oh, yeah, the total stitches. Well, th there's 250 stitches across and it's 150 stitches down, which I believe is a total of 37,500 stitches in this one piece. But that's full coverage for you. Now... What will replace this in my rotation as I'm going to bring back in my mini sea beacon. This is a piece by uh, Jasmine Beckett Griffiths and it's a heaven and earth design charted by Michelle Sayeta. So hopefully in a couple of weeks time you'll see some more progress on that particular piece. Right, Friday. Well, Obviously, we've been on holiday. I haven't done any sewing whatsoever. I can tell you I have got um, a shirt cut out ready for my grandson. So hopefully I'll start to sew that up next Friday. Um, there was some fabric left over from the two shirts that I made my partner. I'll pop a link up to that particular vlog where I made him two shirts which he did take on holiday, actually, and he's wearing one here. So, uh, yeah, I uh, had quite a bit of fabric left over, so I thought I would cut out um, a shirt for my grandson with that. So, yeah, not wasting any fabric. Now for a montage of my finished make and works in progress.
until next time I see you, enjoy your crafting and we'll speak soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.